<clears throat> oh, let me clear up my throat. Okay, so first of all, I don't even have no water or no juice. And I got one of my favorite mints left. So what is that telling y'all? That I'm really not prepared. But whatever, you guys. What's up, divas? What's up, divos? You already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. Day, okay, and I don't really know why I'm screaming like this. I think because I have the fan on and I really feel like you guys can't hear me um, And I'm like super hot and Maybe I should just turn the AC on so I'm gonna be right back So honestly, I'm not really sure why I'm so hot because it does say according to my phone that it's 61 degrees outside and I'm not really sure about how true that is, but my temp temperature thermometer in my house read 78. So I'm not really sure who's telling the truth. Google, because you know how they be fucking lying about shit. Or my house. And I'm pretty sure that my house don't be lying to me about a goddamn thing. So first of all, you guys, it's Real Talk Wednesday. I'm glad that y'all are back with me. I'm really not prepared, so hopefully I don't get dry mouth because I got one mint upstairs with me. And if y'all see me sucking on that mint, my mouth is dry as fuck. So anyway, as far as my week has been going, listen, let me tell y'all. First of all, I had to kind of like finagle my wig, okay? This is like about to be one of my favorite wigs just because I changed the color of it. And I'm about to make another one that looks identical to this one, okay? Because I do love this color. But anyway... Um, I had to finagle my edges because you guys know I have been complaining to you about my edges and how they have walked the fuck off and have not returned. Okay, like seriously, they are falling out. Um, and it's not even the entire front. It's only on the right side. Okay. And what's crazy about it is, why does my lashes keep getting stuck to the bottom? The one thing is I don't really part my hair as much on the right as I do the left. And I have switched it around like millions of years ago because of the situation that it was sitting here. So I went to the left part because I normally was just a right sided part girl. I always wanted my part to be on the right side and my hair got a little bit thinner on that side. Didn't thin to where it was no edges, but just got a little bit less. So I decided to go to the left and I, of course I had to get used to this. But a bitch did. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I really did get used to it. And now I really prefer my parts on the left more so than the right. But it doesn't really matter. Um, I think I'm like 50-50 for each because I've done them on each side. Um, but this side, I do have edges, okay? They're not as thick as, like, when I was back in high school. But they're there, okay? And for this side, well, like, th that bitch is like, listen, honeys. We are out on vacation, and we don't know when we're coming back, all right? And so then this side, I don't know if y'all can see them, but I do have edges here. Like, I really have edges. So I'm not really sure what that's all about. So I have been really, really caring for this particular side, plus the whole front hairline in general, because I did notice, like, my hair is thinner up here. My hair in general as a whole has been thinned thin and thin over the past few years, okay? So that's the reason why I did cut it, but I have been caring for my frontal area a lot more so than normal because of this. And I did use the Kaleida Colors and, or Kaleidoscope, whatever you want to call it, Miracle Drops. I've been using that. Plus, I have been using Black Jamaican Castor Oil, and I've also been using my Dr. Miracles Temple um, Edge, whatever, because I've had that already in my home. So I decided I would choose that. So, and today I started taking biotin pills. By the time I'm finished, okay, with all of this hair care shipped to my edges, a bitch should look like a fucking werewolf. Like, seriously, I want to look like a motherfucking werewolf, and then I can shave my motherfucking hairs off and make bundles out of the shit, and then sell it to everybody. And y'all can make hair out of it, and you know what I'm saying? It'd be like some really fine, thin, like fine hair, not thin, but fine, and probably like a little bit of wave to it. Some shit like that. I mean, because I'm really like going all out. And sometimes I know that you cannot use uh, so much product. But it seems like this area, only on this side, not even this side, just be so dry. As much moisture as I put in it, it just be so dry. So I'm not really sure what that is about. And you guys are probably like, well, bitch, you got combs in your wigs. Um, I got combs in my wigs. 
But trust me when I tell you guys that that motherfucking comb is nowhere near my fucking hair. Okay. It is not even in my hair. What it's actually sitting in inside is I have the wig grip bands on and it's actually past my edges. So it's not even resting on my edges, the wig grip band, nor is the fucking wig. Okay. So it's pulled back a little bit further. I done swooped it. I had to do I, I've never fucking tied my baby hairs down or I never tied my hair down in the front before any wig application. But today, but prior to 30 minutes, I had to do so. I did that on the front right here. So that way a bitch didn't have to spray none of that fucking topic in it. And here, so that way it'll just lay down, make it look a little bit thicker the way I brushed it down. And y'all will never even know the difference. Okay, this is what I had to do. Um, so the wig combs are not on my edges, anything. I've got on a wig grip bands, okay, even though I'm not a huge fan of them because I really don't think they allow your wig to lay as flat, but we, we're going to bypass all of that shit for right now. Um, and it's actually, the combs is actually sitting in underneath the wig grip band. So it's not even in my hair. Okay. That's the only time the combs is in my hair is in the nape of my neck. So if my edges fall out, they're not even edges. If the nape of my neck hair falls out, then oh well, so be it. Because that's the motherfucking kitchen. Or maybe it's not a kitchen. Maybe it's just like a little, um, hot plate because it's not that bad back there. But either way, never to say the less. Okay, so I've been taking care of them like a maniac and I just, um, I, I watched this video like uh, two years ago, I think, this young lady on YouTube, she was using this black hair gel, um, not the black gel that, you know, that pro style gel that we've been having for years, but this other gel that's much thicker and it's for people that have like gray hair or people that have thin edges, okay, so it makes you, it feels like it gives you the illusion of like edges. I just kind of like bypassed that shit because I was like, I'm not about to put that in my hair. That just shit looks like craziness. That's why I started using the topic. But I then switched over to um, tr deciding to try out this black gel to, that's for your edges. But not that particular brand. Um, even New York has a brand and I'm just not even aware of that. As much fucking gel as they done sent me. They did not even sell me the colored edge gel. Like, could a bitch get that? They got like black, jet, um, natural black, jet black, dark brown, and warm brown. Like, they got four colors, and I cannot get none. What's fucked up is they don't make none for the Caucasian blondes. They don't make no shit for them, but therefore that probably would be kind of like see through, and they don't make any for those who have gray hairs. Y'all just supposed to have some black roots. So I did order that from Amazon because y'all bitches know how I feel about Amazon. Like, I love Amazon, okay? I'm about to get something else from there. If anybody has ever used this problem, the ORS, ORS, Temple Balm, please let me know because with rosemary um, oil, because I've watched several videos on it and people have really spoke highly of it. So I'm really wanting to try it out. I do have the Oars um, scalp scrub, you know, that you got to add baking soda to and put it on your head. But I'm kind of like uh, wishy-washy about that because I'm just feeling like if I exfoliate with that in my hair, you know, that shit might take out the little bit of edges that I do have left. And I'm not about to be suffering from no edges. Like, you know what I'm saying? They have looked like they've grown back in a little bit. Y'all probably can't tell by the way I got it brushed. Um, And it's not even, you know what? I don't even ha have any gel on it. It's just kind of like sitting there. My, um, my edges. The comb is just like sitting there and the edges are too. But how I got them greased down is with the Dr. Miracle um, Temple Balm. So if my wig slips the fuck back, please excuse me because I'm really not trying to be putting any combs. And, and anyway, where the fuck am I putting the comb at anyway? But anyway, so other than that, my week is, you know, it's cool. You know, it is what it is. It's almost time for me to get mumsy. So I'm going to try not to make this really long. But I will tell you guys this. I will have a video up this week or probably like next week of, you know, I love, you guys know, I love my big ass earrings. Like seriously, I do love them. And these are straight beauty supply store honeys. Okay. Straight beauty supply. All right. But let me tell y'all, I bought like three pair one day and they was like a dollar 39, a dollar 50, some shit like that. For a pair of earrings, you cannot go wrong. Okay. So me, you know, some people's body heat allows their jewelry, their fake ass jewelry to last a whole lot longer. Me, 
if I'm buying it, you know, and it all depends on where you get it from too. But if me, I'm dep if I'm buying it from like the beauty supply store where you getting like a dozen of them for like four bucks, and then they divvying it up at the store and selling them for a dollar fifty. I mean, come on, because if they selling them for a dollar fifty, how much do you really think that twelve was gonna cost you? Trust and believe, a bitch did have their own, her own jewelry website. So anyway. You know, a dollar fifty is cool because, like, shit, I could be like really, really popping today with these. So anyway, I bought three pairs, and um, like I said, people's body temperature. You know, it all depends on a person's body temperature. It just seems like me, April. I always have this fucking sign, this invisible motherfucking sign, okay, that screams um bad luck or. Not even bad luck, just um, fuck with me, okay? And that could be meant for anything, like meaning a person could just fuck with me in a, in a bad way, a company could just fuck with me in a bad way, my edges could just fuck with me in a bad way, jewelry, whatever, my teeth, it doesn't matter. I just got this fucking hope this 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 like voodoo shit over me like that that I just don't even understand because I feel like I've got this invisible sign like I've been feeling like this for many many years not just this week but in general probably like since my 20s so you know I don't really have good luck with any fucking thing okay if you got good luck with it I'm not I don't I just fucking don't okay it doesn't matter it doesn't doesn't matter we could be doing the same fucking thing and like literally I don't that's how I feel about my YouTube channel too like I could be literally doing the same thing and doing the same type of keyword tags and the same type of shit and you will have like 10,000 subscribers and have like a million views and me I have 142,000 subscribers and 1,000 views like this is how I'm feeling about life in general like like it's just going around me and I'm on the outside of the shit or some shit like that. But anyway, like I was saying, people's body temperature is way different. So I knew that the earrings were going to turn. However, I didn't know that it was going to start turning that same particular day. So I, I found three pair, like I said, and the first pair that I wore was like my favorites. Um, because I had a pair like that when I was, you know, a teenager back in the day, you know, when I would sneak out um, the jewelry out of my book bag when I would go to school. The reason why I'm saying sneaking out is because my mom didn't allow me to wear shit like this. She would say, you're not wearing that junk jewelry, okay? Your earlobes will be hanging to the floor. This is what she used to say. So I would just sneak the shit out. Now, back then when we had these, you know, of course, they was not real too, and they damn sure didn't cost a dollar forty nine, unfortunately. <laughs> Now, mind you, um, they didn't turn as fast either. So anyway, I bought these three pair of earrings and I wore the one pair for the day. Girl, when I took them off, they were gold. When I took them off that evening, they were rose gold, meaning they had turned to this orangish, reddish, reddish color because of my body heat. It just seems like anything that I put on does not last, especially if it's fake, unless it's something like expensive, like, from Happiness Boutique, where I do videos for, or something like that. Those will last on me for like eternity. So anyway, um, I ended up doing um, what I normally do to keep them from um, turning. And I do have a video on that. I'm not going to tell you guys a secret, but um, all the other pairs, girl, honey, please. I've been wearing them shits for weeks and they ain't turned yet, okay? So you can make your $1.49 earrings out of, you know, you can make them turn into like $149 earrings, okay? I'm just saying. And speaking of fucking luck, like, you know, let me just check my email before I even speak badly of these people because I would never want to speak badly of someone. And um, let's see, because I don't really like people playing around with my fucking money at all. No, this is what I'm saying. It's not the payment. This is this is what I'm saying. It's spelled wrong. People, okay, listen. It's spelled wrong. There is a there is no S. There is a missing letter. Okay, listen. Now I'm gonna speak badly of them. I don't really give a fuck. Okay, because it is what it is. Now let me tell y'all. If you ask me to do a video for you, 
And I worked with this company before and I had to just like leave them the fuck alone because first of all, it's just like this. I don't do videos for you to be harassing me about your fucking product. All right, I'll get the video up when I get the video up, especially if you're not paying me to do the shit. You know, I love wigs, so I do f quite a few videos for free because I love to get the wigs and I like to offer like, you know, affordability on my page. There are some, uh, only a few that I don't get paid for, which is okay. It is what it is. So... You know, back a couple of years ago, I was working for this one company and I wasn't even working for them. OK, because working means you get a paycheck. Um, they contacted me, they asked me what I like to do a video. And I was like, sure, why not? Um, gave me a code or whatever. And if people buy your, um, if people use your code, then a certain amount of people use your code, then we will send you another wig for free. That's great. All right. They're synthetic wigs, but you're not spending, sending me like a $500 wig. So let's just think about it like that. So probably like a couple of months went by and I did the second video. Now, when I requested what I requested, they sent me two wigs. One of them they sent me that I would have never requested because, bitch, I'm not fucking putting that on. So I did the one that I requested and I threw that other shit in the back of the closet because I'm not about to wear that fucking wig. That shit was ugly as fuck. Why the fuck would I ask you for that shit? You only allowed me to pick out one. Why is you sending me two? Okay. So I ignored that shit. Probably like a couple of months go by, the young lady was like, well, you you didn't do that other wig video. I said, I didn't ask you for that wig, okay? Well, if you don't do the wig, then we're going to remove your link from the website and you won't be getting any more free wigs. You know what my response was? I could care less. What the fuck you think I could stir fry them shits up and feed them to my kids? I don't care. You know, that was my response because she kind of was really snooty with me twice in another email. And at that point, I had had it. I tried to be so nice to people like this is me. I tried to be nice until a certain extent. Now, here we go again. Um, like a year or so later, we get the same company contacting me again, talking about the same bullshit about, oh, you're going to send me. Listen, man, first of all, our first relationship wasn't that great. And I'm not about to sit up here with you. And oh my God, this, this hair is driving me crazy. And which makes it so bad as I can't see on camera. I'm um, on a screen. Oh God. So the same company contacts me again. All right. And I can't remember if the girl was the same representative, but either way, I ignored the fucking email. I ignored it three times, all right, because they kept sending it. And I don't know if they were sending it to mass amount of YouTubers, but my shit was going in the recycling bin because I could care less. So another young lady emailed me, and her, oh, her entire email was totally different from what, um, her whole script was totally different from what everybody else wrote. So this led me to respond, and my response was really nice. It was polite. I was like, you know what? I do appreciate the um, gestures, but no thank you. Um, and I told her about my bad experience and also the fact that, listen, this is what I consider to be my full-time job or not even a full-time job because I do work for other companies outside of YouTube, okay? And you guys don't even know about that. I do work for other companies outside of YouTube, meaning for their wig companies. You know what I'm saying? I, it doesn't have anything to do with YouTube and then it does, but I, you don't see me doing any type of videos or anything, you know, I'm more or less a marketing, um, scout, a scout marketing scout and an account, a marketing accountant as well for other companies. So I do these things outside of YouTube. All right. Or basically why is somebody calling me anyway? You know, you know, I told the girl, you know, basically I appreciate your gesture. The, the last situation with your company was really kind of like, um, unprofessional and I just don't want to be bothered. On top of that, like, you know, this is not really my full-time job, but it is a part of how I make my income. So I I can't really keep doing videos like that for certain companies for free. Now, if we've had a relationship for like years and years, then we're going to do the video. And also, if it's like one of my subscribers that just opened up a company, I'm going to do the video for you guys because if you support me, I'm going to support you. But either way, you know, she came at me. She responded back. She's like, you know, she apologized for the bad bad um mojo whatever you want to call it and um she she offered me a compensation and i was cool with that you know what i'm saying i was like all right cool cool with the compensation and and stuff and um you know they sent me the wig and i did the video okay <laughs> And they have another company. They got two separate companies and I'm going to do two separate videos. So it was either a certain amount 
for a one shot deal or if you want to constantly work with me then it's going to be a different amount cheaper so anyway like i said i really don't like when people be like um you know when are you going to put the video up? What day are you going to put it up? Or you give me these guidelines to follow by with your company, like as far as give you a heads up on when I'm going to shoot the video, make sure I Instagram you, make sure I send you a photo, just put your name in the title, do this, do that, do some flips and cartwheels and all of that good stuff. That's your guidelines. So when I send you my guidelines, because I have my own motherfucking guidelines, please don't fucking look at my shit and like it ain't shit. All right. Now, here's the thing. I don't fuck with people when y'all play with my money. I don't give a shit how much it is. We don't play those games because I stay professional for a long time. But when I'm telling you that you have 24 hours to pay me that i mean you have 24 hours to motherfucking pay me for that video that has been uploaded some companies i give you three business days okay some i don't depending on what the video is for so you know what i'm saying um but also on top of that, like, listen, I'm not about to be in no video talking about what I like it and I don't like it. It's my opinion. And if you cannot deal with that, then I guess you really don't need me. So that's part of my requirements too. Like I cannot lie for you. I cannot be nobody else. I'm going to be April, not Sarah, but April. So anyway, you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying. Like, please don't fuck with my motherfucking money. Like when I tell you that you got fucking X, Y, Z amount of time to get me my paper, Give me my paper. Don't fucking ignore me. Don't tell me you done sent it when I know you didn't send it. I look in my PayPal and it's not there. And then when you screenshot it to me, don't fucking tell me that you just sent it and you didn't fucking send it because you're missing a couple of letters in that email. I just told you what the fuck it was four times that my fucking PayPal is my email address, okay? And I spelled it out to you and I even sent you the link to pay me, all right? Direct link. Please tell me why you didn't send it correctly. On top of that, you tell me you're gonna send one amount and then you don't. Either way, you know what? This is what I'm talking about shit with companies. I don't like the bullshit. I don't like being rushed. I don't like being fucking played. And I don't fit like being disrespected professionally. So this is how my morning has been going. Like you either pay me or I put the video on private until you pay me. And if you don't motherfucking pay me, well, hmm. Then what's going to happen is this. I'm going to talk shit about your company to the utmost on social media and on YouTube. And you're going to get tired of hearing what the fuck I got to say. And then you're going to fucking pay me my motherfucking money because that's what I've had to do on several accounts. Therefore, now on that note, we're about to get into this real talk. Um, if you guys have not tuned in last week, because I think a couple of y'all bitches did not. All right. For real, I think a couple of y'all bitches did not. Don't just try to bypass my motherfucking real talk. I sit down here for like an hour and talk to y'all bitches. Don't motherfucking bypass my shit. For real. I'm just saying, don't. Um, if you guys have not tuned in last week, then I would let you guys know. You should have. You would have seen on the fucking video that I did get a text message from my daughter-in-law. And I was not really in a good mood that day because of the dentist and my bad experience with the dentist, okay? Like, I had a horrible experience. So I was sharing that with you guys, and I was really upset about it. And then also I was very upset about um, what my 19-year-old son had been up to with his life. So during my rant and my emotional status, I did receive a text message that stated that I am going to be a grandmother for the third time. So you guys got to hear the news when I got to hear the news, but you guys got to hear it the next day, but during the video is when I received it. So I thought it was just this great. So yes, you guys, I'm about to be a grandmother for the third time and I'm super excited. I hope it's a little girl. Um, I did speak to her after I did the real talk video and I was just like really, really happy for her. She had went to the doctors the day before and I um, found out and she had already taken the test too. So yes, um, this is my son who's in New York, the 25 year old, the one who's a rapper. Um, in case you guys didn't know, my son, he does have a full-time job, but he has also his own record label or he has his own songs out and he's been um, opening up for some really um, 
good rappers. Like, I don't know. They're not good to me. I mean, they listen, I don't listen to that type of music. But he opened up for um, Fetty Wap a couple of weeks ago. And he was like really, really lit. I watched his performance. Not Fetty Wap. I'm talking about my son, Shempo. Um, his name is Hollywood Shempo. I just call him Shempo. Um, um, he opened up for some some other guy that's really known, but I don't know him. You know, I'm 43 years old. I don't really know all these people, but yeah. So anyway, um, yeah, so I'm going to be a grandmother again, and I'm really excited about that. And yeah, so on that note, we're going to get to this real talk because I don't want to make it too long. So if you guys have a real talk that you want me to talk about, talk some shit, spill the tea, whatever you want on YouTube, you can always send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Make sure you put in the subject line, real talk. And if you want to change the names of the characters in your email, meaning your name is April, but you don't want anybody to know, then go ahead and let me know. The April, I changed the names for you. They are such, such, and such. If you don't do that, I'm going to either assume that you did or didn't. I may or may not change. I mean, I don't know. It might depend on my mood. But other than that, yes, you guys, let's get into this real talk. I do have some other news that I want to share with you guys. But I'm going to make this separate video because it's going to be like more or less my journey. Um, it's not about my weight loss journey because I'm still on that. But this is a... Um, hopefully a body changing journey of oh, weight loss is a body changing journey too. But anyway, we're going to get into that. I'm going to do a separate video. So yes, you guys, let's get into this real time. Okay, you guys. So here we go. First off, I'd like to say that I love you, April, and your videos, especially your real talks. I binge watch. I binge rewatch them. So here's my problem. Divas and Devos, get yourself a nice little meal because this is a long one. Names are changed. My name is D, and my baby father name is Reg. We met in high school my 12th grade year. From the jump, the relationship was very rocky. Constant cheating and lies, and I stayed because we were young, dumb, you know, and full of cum, I guess. Well, she didn't say that, but you know, that's the old saying. One day I told him I want to start seeing other people. He promised me that he'll never do any of the cheating and lying stuff ever again, and he hasn't. I'm not innocent either. I talked to someone else while he was being a cheating asshole, but he cried about it in front of um, me, um, in front of the whole class, and everyone gave me shit for it. Anyways, that's not the problem. That was a tiny backstory. When I was 18, I found out I was pregnant. I was sad about it because I wanted to go to college. I had a full scholarship and everything, but I was doing... <clears throat> Oh, there go my money. Hmm. But I was doing grown people stuff, so I accepted it. And I decided to keep her and put up college for a year. Well, when I was pregnant, I worked six months during my pregnancy until my doctor told me I, could, I couldn't work anymore because I was constantly losing weight. During this time, I lived with him, my boyfriend, and his mom, and five younger siblings. I was starving all the time, could never eat his mother. I could never eat. His mother never wanted me to eat anything at all. And also, she wanted me to kill the baby. So did my mother. I told them no. Mind you, I was paying this lady $400 in rent for a cold-ass attic space, a corner, actually, that we had to share with his brother. His brother and sisters just literally had to sneak me food just so I wouldn't starve. I was depressed, mind you. My, bed still, my, my baby daddy still didn't have a job, so I was doing everything on my own. I paid her for the one month that I stayed, and she wanted to fight me because she said I had to pay for next month. But I ended up moving out because, you know, I just moved out and back into my mother's house before the next month even came. Reg got kicked out and had to go live with friends. He blamed, it, he blamed me for him being homeless and broke. So I got myself a temporary job and snuck him into my mother's basement, made him a bed, cooked him food, made sure he could shower and everything. Mind you, my mother didn't know he was living there. I paid her two hundred dollars in rent as well. So when she found out her house, so when she found out he was in the house, she kicked us out. I had nowhere to go. I was homeless. So he asked his older sister, "Can we live with her?" She said yes. I was six months pregnant at the time, sleeping on a hard floor with just two pillows and a twin size blanket that we shared. I kept my job until I went almost into three labor three months early and was put on bed rest. 
stamp. So I saved six hundred dollars so I could um, be able to buy food, you know, for us each month and an air bed. My baby daddy was supposed to make six hundred dollars so we can get a place together. He never did. So I just ended up spending the money on things we needed to survive. His sister kicked us out because we had gotten into an argument with her, and I had to move back in with his mother because I was nine months pregnant, with nowhere to go. All the homeless shelters were full. I had her at 37 weeks, a month after I moved back in with his mother. Three weeks later, I found an apartment for us in January. Till this day, we still live together. He still didn't get work. What? He still didn't get work. His excuse was that he doesn't want to work for anyone else. So I just got a job to provide for the family and food stamps so I can be able to save a little, which I can't. Over the course of the year, he has beat on me, smacked me around, dogged me, blames everything on me, and says it's my fault his life is ruined. He's also pulled a knife and maced me. Whoa. He's also pulled a knife and um, maced out on me. He's threatened me if I leave him. He's going to kill himself and blame me for it. Well, if you're going to kill yourself and you kill yourself, you can't blame anybody for it because you're dead. You know what I'm saying? Last month, February, it's gotten so bad that he almost killed me because he was drunk. I've done everything to move out, but there's a waiting list for everything. No friends or family will help me. I needed help with my first month's rent. I had my deposit, so I have to wait to move out. Also, I recently lost my job because I don't have enough money to get my car fixed. We've been together for two years. My daughter is one. And I fell out of love with him when I was pregnant because he wasn't being a man providing, but he was there for emotional support when I was depressed and starving. So recently I reconnected with someone, we're going to call him Mo. <clears throat> He's an ex. I broke up with him because I wanted to focus on schooling and he was okay with that. He said he'll wait for me as long as he has to. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. <clears throat> God wants us together, just not right now. This was three years ago when he said this to me. He makes me feel like a queen, tells me how beautiful that I am, so much more that I haven't gotten in a, a really long time. He compliments me. The only problem is he's in jail because his friends planted a robbery on him and they got caught. He has to do 11 more months until he's out. He told me and he told me and showed me proof that when he gets out, he has a job already lined up for him because he's close with the factory manager. And also he wants to go to college for welding and he doesn't care that I have a daughter. So my question is, what should I do about the Reg situation? What do you think about the whole situation? And should I give Mo a chance? I'll take any advice. I'm sorry for this being really long. I've been needing help for a while. <coughs> Let me get some water, guys. First of all, the young lady, what is her name? She called her name is D. So more or less, she's like probably like she they've been together. Her and her baby daddy, Reggie Reg, has been together since um she's in school. So she found out she was pregnant when she was 18. So they've been together for two years. So I'm gonna say she's like probably 20 now. Okay, so this is crazy. So first of all, Look, I'm about to sit on my legs and be comfortable, okay? So first of all, D, she, you know, she was preparing to go to school and get her life together, but then she met this nigga, Reg, and found out she was pregnant when she was 18 years old, you know? And she ended up moving in with Reg's mom, who basically she, she stayed there for not even probably a full entire month. She gave the lady $400 a month for that first rent and decided to leave before the next month, you know, came in and go back home to live with her own mom. Now, Reg's mom got really pissed off with her. Her baby daddy mom got really pissed off with her because, you know, she didn't pay her the $400. Plus, she got her sleeping in a cold ass um you know, basement in the corner. It was either an attic or a basement in the corner sharing it with his brother. And on top of that, you don't want her to eat your food. Um, so what is she paying four hundred dollars a month rent for? Because if um you paying somebody four hundred dollars a month rent, there should be something included in that motherfucker. But either way, she um they snuck her food, you know, her baby daddy's brothers and sisters snuck her some food. But then she decided to go back home, you know. Now mind you, when she found out she was pregnant, nobody wanted her to keep the baby. 
her baby daddy's mother didn't want her, Reg's mother didn't want her, nor did her mom. And she told them no. I'm pretty sure that Reg didn't want to um, want her to keep it either. I'm not really sure because I don't remember her saying that, but seems like this. So she moved back home. She started paying her own mom $200 a month rent. Reg, um, he got kicked out. You know what I'm saying? His mother kicked him out. He had nowhere to go. You know, he was staying with friends here and there. And he was blaming D for him being homeless and broke. First of all, how the fuck do you blame somebody for being homeless and broke? Second of all, um, who the fuck do you think you are, Reg? Now, you broke because your ass don't want to have a job. He don't want a job because he don't want to work for nobody else. Now, let's skip ahead. She already had a baby. The little girl is two years old, okay? This nigga still don't have a job, all right? They live in an apartment that they've been living in that she done paid for and got while, you know, the little girl was like a couple months old. Reg still don't have a motherfucking job. And on top of that, the nigga don't have no motherfucking job and he beating on her abusing her, pulling shit out, pulling knives out, pulling mace out on her, blaming him, blaming her for his life being fucked up, basically blaming him, blaming, blaming D for him being broke and his life being fucked up. So the last time I recall the shit, Reg, you didn't have a job because you chose not to have a motherfucking job, okay? Not because D didn't say, well, you stay home and watch the baby and I'll go to work. No, this nigga don't want to have a job because he said he don't want to work for nobody. So where do you think you ever going to prosper? This is the shit that I've heard several times from people, okay? Like, well, I don't want to work because I don't want to work for nobody. First of all, who the fuck says that? Okay. Yeah. Nobody wants to work for nobody. Where the fuck do you see people getting up every morning early as fuck outside talking about mm, it's five o'clock and I'm going to work for somebody and I'm so motherfucking happy about that shit. Yes. Let me kick off my motherfucking shoes because I get to go to work for somebody. Do y'all bitches think that I like to get up in the morning and go to work for somebody when I had a job outside of my house? No. OK, but I had no choice to do that shit because if I didn't, I would be broke and motherfucking homeless. Now, I work for myself now and I do work for other companies. Do you think that I like to get up early in the morning? Because I I get up at six o'clock in the morning. I get up to take my kids to school. And then as soon as I'm done with that, my happy ass come home. I work out in my house and I go for a walk. Then I come home. I take a shower, eat something, and then I get to work. OK, this is me being self-employed and I work harder than anybody's motherfucking three Jamaicans with a job. All right. I work three motherfucking jobs and I don't go to sleep till like two o'clock in the morning. So I get about four to five hours of sleep on a daily basis. OK, this is me. I take a nap. I don't even get to go to bed. I take naps. All right. Four hours a night. I go to bed like at two o'clock in the morning and then I wake up at six. Those are motherfucking naps. That's not bedtime. All right. However, is the nigga Reg blaming somebody for his ass being fucked up and broke? Now, let me tell you this much, D. You need some advice? The first thing I'm going to tell you is to get that motherfucking loser, loser with the L, out of your motherfucking life. Loser. Okay? Can we say loser, bitches? Can we motherfucking say loser? I'll be damned if I have some man beating on me, smacking me the fuck around, pulling knives and mace out on me, and then ain't got no motherfucking job. You can't even take care of yourself, dude, let alone the baby. Okay? You, you don't even have fucking motivation. You're a nobody. You're a fucking loser. And you want to come in here and blame me for you being a loser? Who the fuck blames anybody for them being a loser? Like I'm saying, you, you don't go around blaming people for you being a fucking loser. You unmotivated fucking jackass. Okay? Seriously. Like, you're a loser. You're a loser. But... So her thing is, her dilemma is, D's dilemma is, she don't have no money saved up. Um, <clears throat> the, all the shelters are full. She has nowhere to go because she doesn't want to be in a situation. Bitch, even if you don't have no money and the shelters are full up, bitch, you still got somewhere to motherfucking go. Some people don't use their motherfucking resources or better yet. The first thing they don't use is their motherfucking brain cells. Okay. Here's what the fuck I would do in this scenario. If I was you, there's a bitch hit wig slipping back because you know, can't be having that. <laughs> I will take my ass down to Child Protection Services, you know, CPS, 
Child Protection Services. And I will let the motherfuckers know, listen, <clears throat> I live with my baby daddy. I have nowhere to go. He constantly beats on me, okay? And tell them whatever the fuck else you got to tell them. And they will put you in a woman's shelter, a domestic violence woman's shelter. How do I know this? Because many, 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 many moons ago, a bitch had to go through that. Okay? Talking about myself. All right? This was way before my husband. I had to go through that shit. All right? When I was living in Utica, New York. All right? I was with this dude, and I only had one child at the time. And um, we had moved to Utica from New York City. We had moved to Utica to live up there with his sister. As soon as he got me in Utica, he started acting real shitty. I broke up with him, moved across the street to from his sister. And um, it just is like, you know, his sister and his sister-in-law came over there to fight me. And then them two called Child Protection Services. I didn't call Child Protection Services. His sister and his sister-in-law called Child Protection Services on me and told them that, you know, I didn't have anything. Which wasn't a lie because I didn't have any furniture, but I did have food. And I did have a bed. You know what I'm saying? And that was all I had. And um, when Child Protection Services came to my home, um, they spoke with me and I told them my situation. And guess what? That was the best thing them two fucking grimy ass bitches and his ass could have ever done for me. Because they told me that they would put me in a shelter, a woman's domestic violence shelter, and they would help me get on my feet and, um, you know, help me find a place to live other than being across the street from them. And if I wanted to go back to New York City, I could do so. Well, I took them up on that offer. I left that same motherfucking night, okay? And the place that I stayed with, place that I stayed at in Utica is run by the YMCA. The YMCA or the YWCA, excuse me, the YWCA, the YWCA runs the domestic violence women's shelters in every fucking state. Okay. So, um, I went to this big ass house and there was other women and children there and we all had our own rooms and it was just like a family thing. I stayed there. I think it was like probably like three to four months until I decided to leave, um, and go to another state. So, you know, I went from that shelter to another shelter. I didn't want to go back to New York city because I really couldn't afford it. And that's how I ended up going to Schenectady, New York. Okay. But, um, it was the best thing that I have ever, um, experienced in my life or not even the best thing, but I say the best thing because if you're going through something and you don't know what to do and you don't have anybody, the YWCA and Child Protection Services are really there for you. Some people be like, uh-huh, bitch, I'm not messing with CPS. But if you're asking them for help, what is the problem? You know what I'm saying? What is the problem? And in my situation, I was the same thing like you, honey. I had nothing. I had no family. I had nobody. I had no money to save up. But I had my son who was like one and a half, two at the time. So... You know what I'm saying? He wasn't my baby daddy, though. But you know what I'm saying? Um, they helped me. So don't ever feel like you can't get help because the, the, the things that you know of is full capacity and you ain't got the funds for it. There's a whole lot of help out there, whether you know it or not. You can go to the Department of Social Services. If you get food stamps, sweetheart, like you said, you get food stamps, then you could go to the Department of Social Services, your food stamp caseworker. You can go in there. It don't have to be about no food stamps. You can walk up in that motherfucker, okay, and tell them at the window, I'm homeless. I'm not even homeless. Please, I need help. My baby father, I live with him and he's beating on me on a regular basis and I have nowhere to go. You think they're going to turn you away? No, they're not going to turn you away. Bitch, you can take your ass to the police department, to the motherfucking hospital and do that. Same shit. They're not going to turn you away. But um, you can go to the um, fire department. All these places have resources to help you. So don't feel like you're stuck in a hole. But I'll tell you what I wouldn't be doing. I wouldn't be sitting around waiting for this nigga to change or to crack my motherfucking skull open. Or better yet, for you to snap. Because a bitch like me, you keep putting your motherfucking hands on me and talking shit and treating me like shit after all that I work and hard and do for you. And this baby, you must be less believe you got one more motherfucking chance. I'm going to crack you upside your head. However, D, I'm not telling you to do that because less. Listen, listen, listen. I have been to jail for cracking motherfuckers upside the head, okay? So let's not go there. Um, but I will tell you this. I would definitely go get help. Like for real. I'm I'm I wouldn't advise you to sit around. Um, it's unfortunate that you can't go to your mother for help because I'm pretty sure if you did, she's probably either going to tell him where you're at or he's gonna come there. And at this part in your life, you don't even need him around, like on some real shit. 
I wouldn't even be bothered with anybody in my family at this point in my life. I would just try to get it together on my own. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes when we burn bridges, like you kind of like burn bridges with your mom because you had your baby father sleeping in her basement. Like that was on some real sneaky shit. Like that's kind of like you burned a bridge. However, that's still your mom and she probably still will look out for you. But just to be a grown up, be a more grown up person, I would definitely ask for help at either Children and Family Services, like Child Protection Services, the YWCA, the hospital, the police department, the fire department. All of these places will help you, okay? You don't have to have no money. Bitch, you don't even have to go with anything but the clothes on your back. All of these places give you things. I got clothes for me and my son. And when I say clothes, I'm not talking about like some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Companies like Target and Walmart and all different, and the Gap and Old Navy, they donate to the YMCA and the YWCA for families. This is what it's all about. When you come together and you help one another, instead of you having to sit around in some fucking crappy ass situation and figure it out on your own or just keep getting abused and abused and abused. That shit is not fucking cool. And not only is it not cool for you, but it's also not cool for your daughter who's two years old. Now, here's what's going to happen, okay? You are going to end up getting a child neglect case from Child Protection Services if you don't do shit. Meaning, some people be like, what? He's the one beating on me. They don't care. Some t the child Protection Services will see that as child neglect because you didn't go out and get help. Now, why would you want to lose your baby to some fucking assholes? when you can just go get help. Don't sit around, sweetheart, be getting beat on and abused. I mean, like, come on, this nigga is pulling out mace and knives on you. That's like some bitch move. Like, what man does some shit like that to a woman? Like, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to figure that out. Like, what man that you know does some shit like that to a woman? Like, seriously? If a nigga pull out some fucking mace on me, nigga, you better fucking mace me with that shit. Because if you don't, don't sleep on a bitch. You're going to be waking up and your eyes is going to be fucking stinging like a motherfucker. You're going to think somebody put lighter fluid to that shit. Because when you do fall asleep, a bitch going to spray some shit all up in your eyes. It might not be mace. If I don't have any, that shit could be pepper spray, that shit could be hairspray, that shit could be roach spray, insect spray, whatever the fuck it is. But if you spray some motherfucking mace on, or you fucking pull mace out on me and don't spray that shit, you best to fucking spray that shit. Because if you motherfucking don't, you best to fucking leave and go somewhere the fuck else. Because if you don't, a bitch gonna spray you the fuck down. You're going to have to call poison control by the time I finish with you. And you're going to have to get you some new motherfucking eyeballs, okay? So seriously. Now on to the next topic in D situation. So as I said, she got her baby father, um, Reg, who is just a total asshole who don't even have a job. Like he lied and cheated on her in the beginning and then he stopped. I highly doubt that that nigga ever stopped cheating on you, sweetheart. Uh, don't put it past him and don't let it fool you. That nigga, if he's beating on you and blaming you for his life being fucked up and for him being broke, that nigga probably was fucking every Tom, Dick, Harry, Lucy, Mary, and um and 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 Tiffany bitch okay and I said Tom Dick and Harry Lucy Mary and Tiffany because yes if you act like a bitch nigga by pulling out mace and knives then nigga you are a bitch so you must be fucking bitches and niggas too all right I'm just saying now you know if he feels so bad like you know what I'm saying you 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 done ruined his life and shit then oh oh well so be it you know, the nigga done ruined yours. And he's going to constantly ruin your life if you allow him to. So that's why I'm saying go get you some help. Now, here it is. You know what I'm saying? You live with the dude. You got a job. You get food stamps and shit, you know. And he's talking about he's going to kill himself if you leave him. But he's beating on you. And he's telling you, like, if he kills himself, he's going to blame you. First of all, like I said, if the nigga kills himself, he's dead. That means that you're not going to be able to blame nobody because your punk bitch ass is dead. Okay. Second of all, if you leave a letter saying that um, I was to blame for you killing yourself, nigga, so fucking what? Who gives a fuck? Third of all, um, he's blaming you for his life being fucked up, but if you leave him, he's going to kill himself. So that's where the part just don't so you like me to fuck your life up then 
basically. Because if I leave you, then that means you could get your life together and it won't be fucked up no more. So you should be happy. But no, if I leave you, you're going to kill yourself because you like your life to be fucked up, which makes no sense to me. If a motherfucker that's beating on me and tells me that I'm fucking his life up, I'm leaving, bitch. And if a nigga just beats on me, I'm leaving, bitch. And if you tell me that I'm fucking your life up, I'm leaving, bitch. And if you say you want to kill yourself and you're doing all these things to me, I'm going to give you either the motherfucking shotgun to shoot yourself in the head with, or I'm going to give you the fucking rope to hang around your motherfucking neck. And then after you've done these things to yourself and you're dead, I'm going to be like the fucking little munchkins from the Wizard of Oz talking about, um, yay, the witch is dead. Ding dong. The witch is gone. The magic witch, the witch is gone. That's what the fuck I'm going to be singing. Okay. I'm just saying, I'm going to just be like, ding dong, the witch is gone, witch is dead, the witch is gone. I'm going to be, you know, I'm going to have on me a little orange wig and a little hat, a little funny suit. And I'm going to be just like dancing, you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah, we gonna, a bitch going to be happy up in this motherfucker. The nigga's dead? What? Shit, I'm not even going to his funeral. That's how much I don't give a fuck, all right? So if he say he going to kill himself, when? That's going to be my first motherfucking question. Now, she already got all these problems and issues with this deadbeat-ass baby father of hers. But on top of that, so she got the next nigga that she used to fuck with back in the days who she knows she broke up with him because she just wanted to focus on school and shit, which is cool and understandable. His name is Mo. Now, Mo has said God has put us together and our God wants us to God wants us to be together. So this is what Mo has said to her. God wants us to be together. And, you know, he makes he makes her feel like a queen and he tells her how beautiful she is and et cetera, et cetera. Now, listen, they broke up three years ago. And Mo is telling her all these things and compliments her because this is, you know, you know, this is making her happy. This is making her feel good. Also, it's because this nigga Mo is in jail. So basically, Mo's ass is in jail because his friends done pinned a robbery on him. And, you know, he's in jail. And should she get with him? Bitch, so you jumping out of the flames to the motherfucking fire? Like, I'm saying, you just trying to go to hell? Because you got your baby daddy, Reg, who's a complete asshole, whose ass need to be in jail, who is a big time loser. And now you got Mo, who used to fuck with you, but he's telling you, you beautiful and you deserve better and how much, you know, he love you and all of this good stuff. But bitch, he in jail. This jail talk. For y'all bitches that don't know about jail, this jail talk, Okay. That's what the fuck it is. This is what men do when they in jail. They tell you everything the fuck that you want to hear. So that way they got somebody to send them packages, put some money in their commissary, send them some little sexy flicks, write them a motherfucking letter, come visit them. You know what I'm saying? Call them or not. You can't call them, but you know, they can call you. This is what motherfuckers do when they in jail. Like who don't know that shit? Like, if y'all bitches is really falling for this shit still, then y'all is crazy. The only way that you could really believe a nigga that's in jail is if you've been with him for so motherfucking long, okay? And y'all y'all got some real shit together. This is when you can believe that shit. And then them niggas that go to jail and y'all been together forever, they ain't telling you that shit while they in jail. They not telling you that shit. They not telling you, oh, boo, I love you, the most beautiful thing in the world. They not telling you that because y'all been together for so long. This is what a real nigga do. Real niggas don't t talk shit like that while they in jail. They just let it go and let it flow. But you got yourself a motherfucking punk ass bitch that's in jail too. He don't care if you got a daughter. I guess not. The nigga in jail. Shit. How you going to be picky when you in jail? You can't be but so motherfucking picky. Shit. I'm just saying like, and how the fuck he know if you beautiful still? That nigga in jail and I'm pretty sure you ain't going to visit his ass. But here's the thing. So she want to, she want to find out what type of advice should I give her? What should she do? Bitch, you should get yourself together and take your ass to a motherfucking um, YMCA or YWCA or motherfucking one of these places to get some fucking help and assistance to get you out of the situation. Fuck a nigga. Okay, especially one who got somewhere to stay. They both got somewhere to stay and they both assholes. You got this nigga, Reg, who's staying up in your apartment for rent free. Okay, this nigga living rent free. And then you got this nigga fucking Mo who's living rent free at the motherfucking jail. And you telling me that 
he telling you that his friends pinned a fucking robbery on him. I find that hard to believe, bitch. A nigga will tell you anything. I find that hard to motherfucking believe. Have you seen the evidence of his case? And he's getting out in 11 months? Uh, bitch, please. Okay, listen. I'm. This is the thing I need you women to understand. When you got a bad situation at home, meaning a nigga that fucks you up or cheats on you or just a nigga that in general that's no good for you and is treating you like shit, why the fuck would you want to go to another nigga that's in jail or who ain't shit? Like, what sense does that make? Why would you even want to go to another nigga that's, that, that got it going on with himself? Meaning, why don't you just go to your own shit? Be your own person, be your own boss, and get your shit together. If you meet somebody on the side after you've gotten your shit together, then all praises. However, if you know a nigga and you started fucking with a nigga that's about his business, good for you. But that don't mean fall for his bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Still be independent, marry, independent, marry. Okay. And do your thing. Like, so this is the thing when, I don't know. Sometimes I get so irritated with young women because I feel like, are y'all motherfucking stupid or just naive or vulnerable and desperate for a relationship? Like, I mean, I have been there and done that, but I was never this motherfucking stupid. And, and I'm not even saying you're stupid. I'm just saying I never was this fucking naive, okay? Because I'm a fighter. And if you put hands on me, nigga, I'm going to knock you the fuck out, or at least I'm going to try to. And if you damn near killed me while you was drunk, nigga, I'm fucking you up. How you going to let somebody that's fucking intoxicated like a motherfucker get the best of you? But you know what? That's either near here nor there. The whole issue is this. As long as you keep going from one trash bucket to the next trash bucket, honey, all you're going to get is motherfucking trash. That's all you want to get. So now you don't jump from one trash bucket, your baby daddy, and now you want to go to the next trash bucket. Like, listen, I don't really know Mo. You All you're telling me is that he's in jail and he tells you all these nice things that you want to hear and that he's got a robbery pinned on him. That right there tells me, let alone he ain't shit. Now, I'm not putting anybody that's been in jail or that's in jail down. However, because who am I to, say, who am I to fucking do that? You know what I'm saying? All right. However, I do know the fucking jail system talk. All right. And I'm not proud of that. But... What I'm saying is these men, these niggas, they tell you whatever the fuck you think or they think you want to hear, all right? Because of the sole purposes of that I told you. And then there's a lot of you women that fall for the shit and it's just like, what's, and then, you know, we just be like, and then when you guys get hurt or when a nigga get out of jail and then it's like, oh, he, he broke up with me or, oh, he wasn't faithful or, oh, he did this and he did that and he wasn't trying to fuck with me and he was with this bitch and he was with that bitch. What are you getting mad for? You fucking believed everything he fucking said and then a nigga got out of jail and he just fucking skirt to the left on your ass. He act like he didn't even fucking know you. Like, what do you really expect from a nigga? He's in jail. Now, listen, I know y'all probably like, bitch, I know you ain't talking about somebody been in jail because your husband. That's right. He has. He has. However, I've been with him way before he went to jail. And he has tried that fucking jail talk on me. So he says it wasn't. But you know what? I could be wrong and I could be right. But my thing to him was when he used to tell me shit that while he was in jail, please, I would, I would say shit to him like this. I'm not even trying to hear that shit. If that's how you feel, then you could tell me that when you get out. But right now, while you're in there, I'm not even trying to hear none of that shit. And it would be shit like, oh, I want to marry you. You know what I'm saying? Before before we was even married. Oh, I want to marry you. Or I want to do this and I'm going to do that. And, and we had already been together for like 10 years. And it's like, listen, I don't want to hear that shit right now. When you get out, what? what? And I would tell him why, because that's that jail talk. This ain't no jail talk. Of course you're going to say that. Why would you say that? Oh, yeah, you're right. This is the jail talk. You look real stupid uh, admitting to, yeah, you talking jail bullshit to me. So that's that jail talk. You know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? Honey, you got a fucking loser at home. How the fuck you need to be with another loser? And maybe Mo isn't a loser. We don't know this yet. However, you didn't even give him a chance to get the fuck up out of jail and prove himself to you. The nigga's not worthy of you until he can prove himself to you. Meaning, let that nigga come out and find him some jo a job and somewhere to live and do his thing, okay? And if he is worthy, then start dating a dude. I mean, once you've got yourself together. But don't jump from 
like a little fucking flame to a big fucking um inferno. Like who the fuck does that? This bitch done jumped from the fucking stove flame through to the forest fire. Okay, from the fl from the stove flame to the forest fire. She about she about to burn the fuck up. She ready to burn in hell for this shit. Like seriously, this is my advice to you, bitch. Run, bitch, run. Run, bitch, fucking run, okay? Get yourself and your daughter's lives together. Stop fucking around and get your life together for that little girl because she don't deserve to see her father beating on you and she damn sure don't des deserve to be put in another situation that may turn out to be just as fucking bad, okay? Bottom line, fuck is wrong with people these days? So now we're gonna move on to the next situation. Okay, so this is not really a real talk, but it is. And I wanted to read this to you guys because she wrote this to me. And, be you know, if you write me, I'm going to read it because you spent your time. So, and not only that, I just wanted to say thank you. Hey, April, I just wanted to say thank you for help and not even knowing it. Um, laugh out loud. In 2007, I had a very b bad car accident. And and I'm this accident. And I am, um, the doctor said that I would have died and I would never be able to walk again, talk or feed myself, clean or cook. But after many surgeries and prayers, physical therapy and more, I was able to do everything and more on my own. I have even had a child and a job. You come in because my accident, I had a serious, because of my accident, I had a serious brain injury and I really don't remember shit. Um, and I never remembered any, anything. I had the loss, I had lost the ability to read and write. So I learned by a tutorial and by watching your videos, but I could not remember your name. Then you did a video on a Zuri wig and it stuck with me. It was pink, it was a pink wig and I love it. And you, because watching your videos in real talk keep me interested and gave me the confidence to try to do new things. Some of the real talks gave me the confidence to get out of my relationship and not be afraid to be a single disabled mom. I see a lot of people email you with their issues and that is great, but you are great and I'm blessed to have found you. Thanks for all that you do. Love, Bethany. I really don't want to cry right now, but, um, and she sent me some pictures and stuff. So, wow, she got a cute little daughter. She remind me, her daughter remind me of Mumsy when she was little like that. You know, it's crazy because you never know how you would touch somebody's life. Like, seriously, it's crazy because I don't really think that I really do much but just talk shit to you guys in, in real talk, you know. And, you know, and just try to give you my open opinion, my honest opinion, you know what I'm saying? And... It comes from my heart because and sometimes I may come across as kind of rude or harsh or whatever, but I don't mean any harm in it. I just hate to see people suffer from things that they could really avoid. You know what I'm saying? Like, so when I, I, I use my, like, if I have like a situation in my life that I have been through, that's kind of similar. I try to use it because I'm, nobody is perfect. And like some people you may think like, oh, well, you know. This person, they do videos and they're like really, really great at what they do or like, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of, a lot of people on YouTube, um, we all haven't had the luck of being born with, um, silver spoons in their mouths. And I don't really know why they always say silver spoons because I'd rather have a gold spoon, it's more money, but you know, like, or diamond spoon, like, but we, like a lot of us haven't had the luck of being um b being born rich or being born without fucking problems okay or issues like you know so I, everybody goes through some shit in life and so like i'm nowhere near perfect you know what i'm saying like there are youtubers that you would probably think like are perfect and have like this really great life or you know because of what you see on social media and youtube but behind closed doors they go through the same shit just like you and i they just don't like to share with you or they just like put on a front but i'm i'm not here for that shit like you know what i'm saying if i can't be me then I just don't want to do YouTube. And like, that's what I say. Like if companies can't accept me for who I am, like I got a potty mouth and I'm very opinionated. And if I don't like the shit, I just don't like the shit. If you can't accept me for who the fuck I am, then I guess I don't need to fuck with you and you don't need to fuck with me. But it's crazy because even though I just do videos and shit, 
I never would think that like what I do would help someone as Bethany to become, um, you know, able to help herself again in life. You know, she's had a bad car accident. She wasn't able to walk, talk, or feed herself. Or, you know, she she was going through a lot. And that's hard. That 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 would depress somebody. And so, like, just from you watching my videos and my real talk, she was able to remember things. She was able to start learning how to talk again. You know, and, and that's, that's, like, to me, like, I would say if I didn't touch all 140,000 of you guys, and I'll touch just one of you guys, then that's good enough for me because at least somebody walked away with learning something or feeling some type of way. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I just wanted to tell everybody, like, thank you for just watching my videos and just, like, for supporting me. Like, I know that I'm not able to respond to every comment all the time because, you know why? I be, like, so over worked i think because i i I record like six videos in a day six or seven videos in a day not every day but mainly like on like saturday or or friday some on saturday and some on friday but i do this and i and i edit a video every night and i know you guys know that because i have a video going up every single day and i make wigs and then i have my kids that i gotta drive here and there and you know i got things I got to do in my house. So it's like, you know, my life is so hectic and like, I don't never even have time to sit down and like relax. Like if I want to watch a movie, I'm making a wig, like, because it's just me here, um, that takes care of everything. And like, you know, my kids, they do pay rent, like my, my son and my daughter, but I still do have, um, like 85% of shit that I have to do of the other bills and I have household things that I have to take care of. And so like my life is like really, really hectic. And sometimes I'd be wishing like, can I get a clone? So that way um, there could be two of me and then like the other me could do like half and then I could do half. And then I could be able to, you know, relax a little bit. But that's why I don't get but like three or like four to five hours of sleep. If I sleep past like 8.30, I'm pissed off. And that's only on the weekends because I feel like, damn, April, you could have been up in the shower, putting on your makeup so you can get ready to do your videos. Like, so this is how I be feeling. So like, and then a lot of times I get very discouraged because I put in so much work to doing my videos. And... I barely get the views from it. And it's like, damn, April, do you even want to continue doing this YouTube thing? And then I read emails like Bethany's. It's like, you know what? You got people out there that really appreciate you and you don't even know. So I really, really like to read shit like this because it just makes me feel like it just makes me feel so good inside. So I do thank you, Bethany. And I'm so happy that I was able to be part of your recovery. And you know, you could always hit me up. Your daughter is such a cutie. She reminds me of Mumsy. And honey, you just keep striving and life will just get better. That's all I can say, like to everybody, like, you know, just never settle. Some people may say you can't do this, you can't do that. You know something? I'd be quick to say, try me. Call my bluff. I love when a motherfucker tell me that I can't do something. Because I would be like, yeah, all right, you can call my bluff if you want to. I tell my husband this all the time. He'd be like, oh, my God, why do you always got to prove something? It ain't that I got to prove something, but don't tell me that I can't do something. I might not be able to do it that good, but I'm going to do the shit. You know what I'm saying? And then I might be able to do it better. Who knows? But I just feel like, you know what I'm saying? Don't ever let nobody tell you you can't do shit. Do that shit. Like, seriously, do that shit. So thank you, Bethany. I love you, girl. And, you know, I'm happy for you. I'm seriously happy for you. It's always nice to read good news. Like, seriously, it's always nice to read some good news. Like, that's what's up. Wow. So next email. <laughs> Hmm. Hello, April. Hope you're doing well. I watch your Real Talk videos every week and I love your real advice. I have a situation I would like your opinion on. You can call me Tish. <clears throat> I just got married almost a year ago in April. Hmm. Me and my husband have a five-year-old and a one-month-old and have been almost to get, um, together for almost seven years. Here is my issue. I recently found Facebook messages in my husband's phone with someone he claimed to work with. He deleted all the messages except one reply from her, so I couldn't see the conversation. 
He claimed the messages were about some pills he was trying to sell her, but I don't believe it. I forgave him and he told me he would end contact with her. A couple weeks ago, I see they are messaging again. Again, he has deleted all messages except her one reply. He got into a big fight and he claims he didn't message her. We got into a big fight and he claims he didn't message her. Um, this was just a coincidence and she sent that message on her own. That message she sent was, need what? That was a question mark. That was the message she said, need what? Why would she send that on her own with a previous, without a previous message from him? So I understand what she's saying. So the message that um, Tish was only able to see because he deleted every single message, but this one message that said, need what? With a question mark. So she's asking him like, need what? Like, you know what I'm saying? And he's telling her it was by coincidence that she just wrote that. Um, why would she send that on her own without a previous message from him? I believe her. I feel her. I believe he is not telling the truth. My husband also talks down to me. He is very secretive with his phone. He acts like I can't pick it up. I can't even pick it up. We don't agree on a lot of things. One of my other issues is that he has a drinking problem. Drinking problem. He has one of my other issues is that he has a drinking problem and smokes weed every day. He goes out at least once every weekend and stays out late. I'm starting to feel like I don't want to be in this marriage anymore and find myself not caring. We have had infidelity problems in the past, which is why I don't believe him. Am I wrong or jumping to conclusions with my thought process? I would really like to know what you think. Keep doing what you do. I love real talk and watch every week. Girl, Tish. So Tish husband that they have been married almost a year now because they got married in April. They've been together for almost seven years. They got a five-year-old and another child, I think like two months old. So basically her husband is at the workplace and he's getting messages from some, some female that he works with on Facebook messages and he's deleting the messages and he's saying that, you know, she's only trying to buy pills from him. First of all, what is you at work for selling people pills? Cause what type of pills is you selling? I know the motherfuckers ain't aspirins because if that's the case, the bitch could go buy them on her own. So obviously it's a pill that you cannot get without either a prescription or without a motherfucking prescription. So basically it's illegal. Second of all, you're deleting messages from your Facebook and then you've already had infidelity issues. You talk down on her and he smokes weed every day and has a drinking problem and goes out every weekend damn near and doesn't come home until late. And Tish is wondering if she jumping the gun on her issue, her thought process, because she doesn't want to be in a marriage anymore. bitch let me tell you something first of all i would have never even married his fucking ass if he had if we've had so many infidelity issues okay that's a no-no i would never have even married his motherfucking monkey ass if that was an issue second of all that nigga is cheating on you don't let him fool you talking about he trying to sell the bitch some pills at work if he is trying to sell the bitch some pills at work why the fuck would he even um jeopardize his job Okay, so now you got an asshole, a dumbass at home, and he's talking down on you. Let me tell you something. First of all, men, not all men, but there are some men that feel like they are just inferior. They are superior. They are better than women, and they talk down on women. We are equal. Okay, let's just get that straight. We equal. All right, there are some dumbass women, and there's some dumbass men. There's some smartass women, and there's some smartass men. Either way, we're equal. All right, and I find that so crazy that some women just don't realize that anymore. If you talk shit to me and talk down on me, I'm about to talk shit to you and down on you. Not because you did it to me, but because you disrespected me. And I don't deal with disrespect. That's one thing that I don't fucking deal with. I'm not going to allow you, I don't give a fuck who you are, to disrespect me. Husband, boyfriend, baby father, um, whoever. You're not about to sit here and disrespect me. Okay? Now... On top of that, you got a drinking problem. Let's let's just let's just get right to the point, okay? First of all, that drinking problem shit, that shit ain't gonna get no better until he decides to, okay? Sweetheart, that shit is just gonna get worse. Now when I tell you this, I know this from personal effects, meaning I've already been through that. All right. I've already been there, done that. Why the fuck do you think that I moved to Arizona and also divorced my husband? 
because he had a drinking problem. Now, mind you, he doesn't anymore. And I'm so proud of him because he has turned out to be, well, he was always a wonderful person. He's always been a wonderful person. He's always been a wonderful man. He just had an issue and he would stop for like very long periods of time. And then he would just do it and start back up. But he, um, he is a wonderful person and I'm so proud of him because he has really, really gotten himself together to the point where it's like, wow, I just really am like shocked and amazed. But either way, um, you know, people that have drinking problems, sometimes they can get help on their own. And then sometimes they will allow you to help them and then they can, you know, deal with the issue. But when it's a person that really don't want to deal with the issue you know what I'm saying? Like your husband and he smokes weed every day and he drinks all the time. He's not worried about getting any type of help. And then he's selling pills. Like this nigga is like going downhill very slowly or probably fast for all I know. But it's like this. When you start feeling like you don't want to be a part of the marriage anymore and you don't want to be married anymore because of the shit that you're going through, because the shit that you've said, I can totally relate to it. Like I, everything you said, I have been there. I swear this is like a reincarnation of my life, but not really. You know what I'm saying? Meaning the drinking problems and the smoking the weed and, um, well, he wasn't selling no pills. My husband was selling pills. But you know what I'm saying? I can understand how you feel because after a while, that shit that that man does, that shit drains the fuck out of you. That shit feel like it just reaches inside of you and just rips your motherfucking soul out. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, this nigga, all he do is drink. It just feels like he done took your soul and ripped it out because you start slowly but surely start becoming numb and then it start you start feeling like I don't even care. And that's how I started feeling like after a while, like, you know, I would be bitching to my husband, like, oh, come on, you never be at home. You always run in the streets. You drink it, you doing this, you don't spend no time with me. And I started feeling like that way. But he never would talk down to me. He was he never did shit like that. But it started making me feel like, you know, I would cry about it all the time to him. I would constantly be crying about it to him, but it seemed like he just wasn't paying it no attention because he still was doing the shit. And then it's like when you keep telling a person something and they just not doing anything, you as a person start becoming numb to the shit. And then that's when you stop caring. And you know what? I was that same person. I stopped caring. It's not that I stopped caring about him as a person, but I just kind of stopped caring about the marriage. I wasn't doing anything sneaky, but I just stopped caring. Like, you know what I'm saying? I didn't care if he didn't come back home. I didn't care if we didn't speak to each other. Um, sometimes I would rather him not be there. Um, you know what I'm saying? It was shit like that. You know, I would make him sleep on the couch. It was shit like that. So it's like, you know, you get to that point. It's like, you know, I don't want to be married no more. And that's what ended up happening with me. I left. You know what I'm saying? Because he was drunk and he, we got into this big altercation, this big, this, this big fight. Um, I left and I came here. I came here to Arizona to get the fuck away from him because I just needed my sanity back and I needed my peace. I needed my peace of mind and I just needed me. I needed to learn how to be me again and to grow as a person and to become a stronger person and depend on nobody but me. Even though I was depending on him at the time, when we was together because he had his own issues, I just needed to get away from all of that and just start my life over. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I came here and that's why I got divorced. <clears throat> but you know, shit happens. We get back together. But anyway, um, I understand how you feel about it, Tish, but when you stick around, it doesn't get any better. And I'm not saying to abort your marriage, but I am telling you this, that if he's not going to change, then it's not going to get any better, honey. You just going to be in a relationship with somebody that is not willing to be any different and is not willing to change. Meaning y'all just going to be in this relationship for what? The sake of your children? Me personally, I got real numb over it. Like seriously. Um, Um, I got real numb. I just started feeling like I could care less about us 
and eventually I just broke. And, and, and then it wasn't that I didn't care about him anymore because I always loved my husband. It's just that fact that I just didn't want to be in that relationship anymore. And it, it took a, it tore a lot out of me. Like it really did something to me like drastically, you know, and I wasn't able to see that until I was able to move. My kids say that I've changed a lot since we've moved here. They say that I've become a nicer person and I've become a more positive person. And I, I'm not going to admit to that I have because I used to just not, I wasn't miserable, but you know, um, I just wasn't that happy. And I have noticed like a big change in my life. And you know, it seems like right now, Tish, you are not happy. You're definitely not happy. And unfortunately, we get married under false pretenses, but the signs were there for you. You seen that this man was an animal. And unfortunately, you married him anyway. But you know, it is what it is. We all make mistakes and we learn by them. And what better way to do it now is to just learn by your mistake and, you know, either offer him an ultimatum. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all did just get married. So I don't want to say just hurry up and run away from the nigga, bitch. But, you know, you didn't talk about trying to get him any help. If if I were you, if I were you, I would, for one, offer him some help. Say, hey, listen, babe, I love you. And, you know, we have children together and stuff. And I would love for you to be able to get yourself together and you know, stop drinking, stop smoking weed all the time and stop cheating. Maybe you guys should go to counseling together because some people say, um, you know, what's that old saying, um, when you, um, for best or for worse, when you get married, first of all, nigga, I'm not going to be for best or for worse all the time, because if you keep doing the same shit, you keep fucking other bitches behind my back, getting drunk, smoking crack or whatever. I'm not going to keep sitting around doing that shit for better or for worse bullshit. Like nigga, bye, peace, deuces. That's how I'm going to say to you guys like deuces. But, you know, so all that for better or for worse shit, let, let, don't listen to that shit because that shit for better or for worse, like that shit is for better, worse and worsest. And that's not even a word worsest, but that shit feel like it sometimes like, nah, we not going to keep. No, nah. now nah, all this cheating and shit, that shit ain't right. Like, I'm sorry, but um, listen, he either going to quit it and get some help or if he ain't trying to get no help, sweetheart, then what you need to do is move on. You know what I'm saying? You knew he was a fucking cheetah a liar, a fucking con man, whatever you want to call it. And if he ain't changed then, then he ain't going to change no time soon. And if he don't want to go get help for his drinking problems and for his loose dick, then bitch, you need to keep um, deuces to the nigga and carry on with your two children. Get that child support money. But as long as you sit around and that nigga keep drinking, you're not going to be no happier. You're not going to be happy. You're just going to be part of the, sh the problem. Because as long as you stick around, it seems like it's like, you know what I'm saying? You're a part of the problem. You're not helping him none as long as you stick around. As long as you enable him, you're not helping him none. Sometimes we got to walk away from shit just for it to get better. That's what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we have to walk away from something just to allow it to get better. And sometimes that walk could be mighty far and mighty long. But sometimes in the end, it's worth it. And if it's not really supposed to be, then that shit will come to light and you will fucking see that shit. Like on some real shit. You feel me? So on that note, you guys, I gotta go get my mumsy boo. I love you guys. Stay diva and delicious. Uh, make sure you rate, comment, subscribe. I'm gonna do another video after this one. When I come home, I gotta go to Sam's come get me some lettuce. Um, but yes, you guys, I will see you soon. Mm. What? Damn. Mm. Damn. 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 Damn.